By primogenesis shall a new age of reason begin. Cheers for your help dragging blocks from out of the dumps the other day. Thing is, I reckon he's gone and thrown himself back in. Judging by the dr his jowls lately, so I'm thinking maybe if it weren't just the leather what was on his mind, maybe there's other demons jabbing their pitchforks in his privates. I know you're busy folk, but next time you're, you find yourself free, maybe go ahead and guess what's going on. Assuming it is just a watch. Hopefully it's nothing. But I should speak to Blackthorn just in case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Blacksmith's blues too. That guy's always depressed. I mean, I get it. Totally get it. Something ain't right with that hound of yours. When it please. The fuck's wrong with Torgo? The fuck you have a problem with Torgo for, Granny? Torgo. You seen well enough when I last saw him. The fuck you do, my dog? The fuck you did to my dog, really? The record. I was stumping through the hideaway lodges at August Pass and might have to rush the night. Maybe by now. Trouble with the ledges? Shouldn't he be asking Otto for help? You guys are losing your minds over some clouds like somebody doing some shit they're not supposed to like i got four side quests going on and the main quest okay, the fuck do you do with my dog granny i got your note you think something's wrong with toggle so you can read congratulations i imagine Couldn't say i were wrong with him I said some weren't right. He's not been eating me treats. He used to love cracking the bones from Molly's boiled brown, but now he won't so much as look at him. Didn't like him. Which is why I'm of a mind that his mind's on summit else. You've not been working him too hard, have you? No harder than usual. Is that it, boy? Do you need a rest? Mm-hmm. What was it you said he was? A frost wolf? That's what the lawsman seems to think. Then maybe this all has something to do with whatever it is that's woken inside him. I suppose things happen different since Rosaleth. Perhaps Hippocrates knows something. Instead of everything, you mean? Perhaps. Yes, let me talk to Blackthorn here too. We're gonna to be doing some side questing. Blackthorn, do you have a moment? No. Not really, no. This won't take long. I just wanted to ask how you're getting on. August was worried about you, and you might still be doubting your craft, even after learning the trick of that cuirass. Is there something else weighing on your mind? Mm. Perhaps sharing your thoughts might help. That bastard's like a dog with a bone. Still, you've got a keen eye, I'll give him that. He's just... well... Karen showed me something. Something I've never seen before. And that was? A sword. An odd-looking thing with a single-edged blade. The metal itself wasn't anything to write home about, but fuck me. The edge on it. You could slice a man clean in two with a weapon like that, and he'd be halfway home before he even realized he'd been cut. Oh, wow. So that's what's troubling you? Nah, no, no, no. Not troubling me exactly. More distracting. Can't stop thinking. How do you get an edge of that sharp? It's driving me mad. And if you knew how to do it, we could arm the curse breakers with even better blades. That's about the size of it, yeah. I'll see what I can find out. Mm -hmm. Sharper swords are always welcome. Mm -hmm. And we can't have our master blacksmith being distracted. Mm -hmm. 
Sure, a soft touch, you know that. But I can't say I'm not grateful for it. Good luck, eh? Thank you. Yeah, I feel like every time it's fuck, and it, it, it always Karen starts with Karen. Sword. It always starts with Granny. Granny shows him some shit. He gets in his fucking feelings, and then, you know, rather than Granny selling the shit to him, she You're fucking. Well, Karen. What you want? Out with it. I want to know about the sword you show Blackthorn. Single-edged and extremely sharp. I can't with Granny. Running around after him again, are you? Stop showing him shit. This. Like stop I showing him shit. How to work an edge like that? It's driving him to distraction. Little wonder, I suppose. There's not many like that make it as far as the twins, and those that do go straight into private collections, which made it nice and easy finding a buyer. Can you tell me who bought it? Where is it now? You think I tell people who my clients are? <laughs> suppose you're not likely to go nicking him off me, are you now? Fine. If you stop mooning at me like that. Lord Ignax, the man you want. Delmechian bloke. Collects weapons and the like. And he's got more money than sense, which is why he's one of my favorite clients. Reckon he'll still be at the inn in Dalamil, where I left him. Thank you, Karen. Oh. And he's a touch eccentric. If you take my meaning. Mm. I appreciate the warning. Okay. Like I'm saying, like, if she would just stop telling him shit or showing him shit and then be like, oh, yeah, I sold it. Like, immediately after, like, this, we wouldn't be in a situation. Like, that's a common thing. Yeah. There's a storm coming, Sid. Would that be thunder? Growing tat the twins. Norseman, I need to ask you about Torgal. Something's not right with him. He isn't ill, is he? I don't think so. But according to Lady Karen, he seems to have lost his appetite. Which is certainly a new development. She says he's hardly been touching his bones of late, and she believes it may have something to do with what happened at Rosalith Castle. Hmm. I rather think she might be right, though not about his appetite. All canids are instinctively inclined to crack open bones for the rich marrow that resides within. And I see no reason why a frost wolf should be any different. Accordingly, I suspect it is not a lack of appetite that afflicts Torgal, but a surfeit of it. If we assume that his newfound magics require additional nourishment to sustain, it may well be that the bones Lady Karen is accustomed mm, to providing are no longer sufficient. So we're going to need to frost get down wolves, better, all, habitually prey upon far larger animals whose bones may yield altogether different nutrients. Mm -hmm. As to where one might find a suitable substitute, some antelopes that graze the meadows of eastern Rosaria oh, have been known to grow to a size more than double that of their lesser cousins. I don't recall ever seeing any that large. And little wonder. The oldest and largest such creatures rarely leave the safety of the highlands for fear of predators. The last elder antelope sighting I recall hearing about took place near Cressida, and that was long before the village was abandoned. Even so, it seems like a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Good hunting, Clive. Yeah, I really can't leave until I talk to Otto. So we gotta talk to Otto. Storms out mother crystals and her skies are a roiling cesspit. And Gav? He's with your uncle in the free cities, helping Mid with her project. Setting an owl their way the moment the winds turn foul. Still waiting on a reply, though. Do you have any good news? No. Well, that depends on your definition of good. <laughs> no. All right, fine. What do you suggest we do? 
Oh, no, I'm just the messenger. I'll leave the scheme until those more suited to the task. Could be that Lady Vivian and Old Tomes have their own thoughts on the current state of things. Could be that they don't. It certainly can't hurt to ask. Mm -hmm. I suppose not. I'm like, why can't we just like convene all together and then like, Did you get my letter? That's why I'm here. Shh. Otto won't be listening. <sighs> Is this better? Okay. A little. Listen. I have some bad news. It turns out the hideaway may be slightly behind in its payment to certain lenders. You mean slightly? And it may be my fault. But I swear to the goddess, I thought I had the numbers square. Sadly, that square turned out to be more of a circle. Zero, you might say. I can straighten it out, I swear, but it's going to take some time. And I'm going to need help keeping it from Otto. Be late for that, I'd say. There you are. What a surprise. So let me get this straight. You forget to pay our lenders what they're due. And instead of coming straight to me, you get Clive to come to you. And I hope he'll dig you out of the hole you've dug for yourself. Clive, the man in charge of the place you've been cheerfully trying to bankrupt. And you thought this was a cunning plan. Why? Well, who needs paying? Oh, just Martha. And the dame. And, well, Lady Karen. <laughs> But only 500 talents. We owe three of our most trusted friends five million gil. Each. Five million. Each. They lent us the bulk of the money we used to rebuild the hideaway, you see. And, well, I, I must have made some sort of oversight. For fuck's sake. <sighs> Those ledgers were my responsibility. And it was my decision to entrust them to you. This is my fault. Jesus. Do we have that much to hand? I can always ask my uncle. No, we don't. And no, you won't. We've lightened Lord Rossfield's purse enough. After the king's ransom we had off him, he deserves better than to see our begging bowl. Besides, we'll need to learn to stand on our own if we're going to make this work. All right, million. but that doesn't mean you have to shoulder the burden yourself. Is there anything I can do to help? There might be. How'd you fancy taking these to Martha and the Dame? Rocks. Rocks, he says. Worth a thousand talents apiece, these are. A little something Sid and I set aside for when times got lean. And I reckon 15 million in overdue debt probably qualifies. I just hope our associates' eyes are a bit more discerning than yours. I'm sure they will be. Mm. Should be me making the rounds, really. But you know how it is with this place. Orders to bark, asses to wipe and all that. I know. Which is why I don't mind going in your place. Dollars in the fucking hole. Go. Do you know why I only gave Master Clive here two star rubies? Because... You'd rather Lady Karen killed me. Because I'd rather Lady Karen killed you. Yes. Well, I suppose this is goodbye then. Don't worry. I'm sure Karen will understand. No, she's gonna fuck you really? up. Do you think so? No, she's gonna fuck no, you up. I don't. She's gonna fuck you up. You're making them skies then. The low wind is wrong. How is it that every one of your little excursions presages some inexplicable catastrophe? I Not that it. you are to blame for the Dominion's fate. No one could have predicted the actions of the Crown Prince. Mm -mm. I'm sorry I couldn't save your home. My countrymen are stronger than you think. 
A few toppled clock towers won't break their spirits. They'll be back on their feet in no time. I hope so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at us. Bluer than a pair of bog crabs. Tempting though it may be, sulking will not help us find a solution to this mess. You believe there's one to be found? I don't know. But I am certain we're more likely to find it if we first examine the facts. Cutscene. Beneath these darkened skies, fear and confusion reign over Valisthea. Oh, the lands around the fallen Mother Crystals had already begun to wilt for want of ether. But not like this. Crystals that filled wells and fueled furnaces. Now nothing but pretty shards of rock. And those that hang from the people's necks cast nary a glimmer of light to keep the dark at bay. It is only a matter of time before the common folk convince themselves that the end of days is upon us. And yet I fear a swift end is more than we can hope for. While most of the world thirsts for ether, the remainder drowns in it, spawning Akashic in droves. And amidst the hordes of mindless beasts, with magics as like to fail as function, even the strongest nation would falter. Rosaria and the Iron Kingdom teeter on the brink of collapse, while the tragedy in Twinside has all but paralyzed the Holy Empire. Dalmechia fares little better. Rumor has it the ministers fled the capital after the fall of Drake's Fang, leaving their beloved Republic to crumble. Wulud, meanwhile, moves in earnest. The Iron Heyar has been sighted off storm. The world, in short, is in chaos. It would seem our civilization was nothing but a castle of sand. To be washed away at the whim of the waves. A castle of sand. Not my best flourish, but it seemed fitting. The reports I've received are considerably more blunt in their appraisal. Without the protection of their nations, it will fall to the people to defend themselves against those who would take what is theirs. Mm -hmm. Which is only ever going to end one way. Yep. Defending a farmhouse against a band of chocobo thieves is one thing. But pitchforks and palisades will do little to stall an army's advance. Should the King of Wulu deign to invade, there would be none to stop him. Which means we gotta stop them first. None but us. No, we gotta stop him first because he aligned, Barnabas aligned himself with Ultima. Oh, I took that. Drive over. And that's, that's the sad part. It's because of the fact that Barnabas is aligned with Ultima willingly. It's crazy because these missives, you'd think these missives would like, the way these missives populate in, you just think, oh, hey, like maybe, just maybe, like, a storm coming soon. you'd be home more, but you're not really home more, like, because you Let go on guess. these long dungeon crawls. You'll hear about the skies. Is there anything you don't know, Lawsman? <laughs> it doesn't take a court astrologer to argue the obvious, as for what has disturbed the heavens. That, I believe, is a question the Fallen might be better placed to answer than I. And on the sixth day, 
Did the gods tear the sun from the firmament, visiting darkness upon their prideful sons and daughters? But I dare say you remember your childhood lessons on the sins of Zemeckis only too well. You think they're connected? But Ultima was one of the gods responsible. Well, he has certainly exhibited powers that we mortals would associate with the divine. Mm -hmm. There is nothing divine about him. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but he wouldn't be the first god of whom that could be said, now would he? <sighs> Yet for all the fairy tales that tell of the sins, there is almost nothing in the way of actual historical accounts. Had I the journal of Moss the Chronicler, I may have been able to tell you more, but alas, I fear all remaining copies have been lost to time. You will forgive me, I hope? Certainly not. Because there is nothing to forgive. Even without this journal, you've provided us ample wisdom. And we will always be grateful for it. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Otto will be more inclined to share his thoughts when he hears what the others had to say. Why did this auto just show up? Why do I have to go run back and forth for auto? Can I leave? No, I can't leave. <laughs> I'm still stuck here. I'm still stuck. Let me out. Let me out. There's Joe. Joe's here. Clive, we have a problem. Only one. That would be a first. It would. Actually, there are three. Oh, God. We had as many owls arrive while you were at the shelves. Martha's got a cache at her gates, and talk of monsters roaming the hills outside of Northreach has put the wind up Isabel and her lot. And don't forget Dalimil. Lubor says the village was raided by bandits. When it rains, it pours. It fucking pours. The curse breakers are spread thin, taking stock of the damage in the Dominion. And even if I could get word to all of them, I doubt they'd get here in time to make any real difference. <laughs> Which means there's only two people who can. Jill and I. Let them know we're on our way. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm sorry to drag you into this. It's just I couldn't think who else to ask. Quick look. Seen enough? <laughs> 